Hi, this is Sophie. The stencils that I will show you can be used for numerous things. For t-shirt printing, for scrapbooking, for wall art. I personally use mine for face and body painting. If you want to buy stencils already made, you will find some information in the description box below. But if you're like me and you like to do things yourself, you will find that they are cheap, fast and easy to make. So let's get started. Stencils can be used to add a specific shape on the design, uh, such as a butterfly, a skull, or a soccer ball. And as you can probably tell, this one gets a lot of use in the country where I live. The other type of stencils are those that are used to add a specific texture to a design. And here are a few examples. As you can see, they are a lot more complicated and they are made of lots and lots of little details. And it is difficult to achieve that level of detail by hand. Um, however, I did manage to make this one that I use for leopard markings. Another possibility would be to use a plotter machine to make those and I can show you this in another video. Before you start working on the design of your stencil, which is the fun part, you will need to know how big it should be because there is nothing more aggravating than working hard on a stencil and realizing later on that it's so big that it doesn't fit on the face or so small that it can hardly be seen at all. To do this, just place a piece of paper over your face and roughly trace the area in which your stencil should fit in. This will give you a very good indication of the size that you should be aiming for. The stencil that I will make today will be placed over the forehead following the shape of an arch and this is my way of knowing how big it should be. If your design is pretty simple, like mine today, you can use a software. Um, the one I'm using is OpenOffice, which is similar to PowerPoint. There are lots of more sophisticated software out there like CorelDRAW or Adobe Illustrator. I then print it and make sure that it fits into the shape that I predetermined earlier. I often go on the internet to look for inspiration. I go on Google, then I'll go at the very top right click on images and type in what I'm looking for, followed by the word stencil. For example, mermaid stencil or skull stencil. Or if you very quickly want to add a unicorn on your design, but you struggle with that as I do, you could create your own unicorn stencil. And here are lots of options that could inspire you to come up with your own design. Make sure, however, that you don't infringe copyrights. To create the cloud that you saw me use earlier in the Halloween design, I used this method. I went online and looked for many different clouds and then um, drew a freehand my very own cloud design according to the size and shape that I was looking for. Stencils are made of a flexible plastic material which must be thin enough to be bent in all directions around the face without hurting it and yet strong enough to be reused many, many times and washed over and over again with soap and water or even alcohol for the most uh, stubborn stains. Most stencils that you can buy online, such as this one, which is a BAM stencil, are made of mylar plastic with the thickness 7.5 mil. And I will put all the specifics in the description box below. It is possible to buy mylar plastic online either in an airbrush shop or I actually found mine on Amazon. But the chances are that you won't need to buy specifically Mylar plastic because you probably have something similar at home. Uh, as you can see, this Mylar plastic can be rolled on itself but not squeezed between the hands, which are the properties that we will be looking for now. Let's look at this binder pocket. It's flexible, yes, but I can completely squish it together. I couldn't use that to make stencils. What about this plastic sleeve? It's a little bit thicker, but I can also squeeze it together. It's therefore also too thin. This document pocket, however, is perfect. And you can tell because it's already been cut out to create some stencils. It's flexible, yet thick enough to be durable. I can roll it on itself, but not squish it between my hands. It works really well. Have a look in your office or school supplies, and I'm sure you'll be amazed about all the treasures that you discover. This is another document package, uh, which is great because I could use the front transparent cover, 
but uh, the blue one in the back as well, they would both work really well for stencils. But I encourage you to look also outside of your office supplies cabinet. This was actually the cover of a wall calendar and I realized it could be perfect for stencils. It's flexible yet robust so it could work really well and I have such a large sheet that I could make at least a hundred stencils so it's great and so cheap. So I'm sure you get the point. Don't spend your hard earned money on plastic that you have already at home or that you can ask your friends or family to give to you. And at the same time, you can recycle and save the environment, which in my opinion is always a good idea. To cut your stencil, you will need an X-Acto knife, a pair of scissors, small or big, depending on what you prefer, and a few binder clips or paper clips. As you can see here, you will need to leave a space all around the design that you created so that the color that you will apply with the sponge doesn't go over the edge of the stencil. So I cut a piece of plastic big enough for my design. I make sure that the paper has exactly the same size and I secure both together with my paper clips. I then protect my table with a thick cardboard and I start cutting each individual shape I take my time doing this because I want to make sure that each corner is very neat. Once you've cut all around, if you notice that um, the piece is not coming out on its own, don't pull really hard on it, but rather carefully lift it up and cut the little piece which is still hanging. This design was actually pretty easy to cut because all the lines were straight. If you're cutting curved lines, it's a little bit more tricky. Make sure that you proceed in tiny little steps and rotate the paper between your fingers to make it easier. Once I've cut each individual shape, I take a marker and I draw a line all around it, making sure that I leave enough space around it, as I said earlier. You've probably noticed that stencils uh, usually have a little piece sticking out like this uh, to hold them so that the fingers are not in the way. And I want to put that on my stencil as well. So I place it on the face and I try to think what is the most comfortable way to hold it. And exactly where I put my finger is also where I will add these little ears or handles on the stencil itself. I then only need to cut it along these lines and it's ready to be used. By the way, make sure that all your corners are rounded so that you don't poke the eye with it by accident. I now want to share a mistake that I made while doing a new stencil recently. It actually looked just fine until I placed it on the face and realized that some pieces were sticking up in the air which made it literally impossible to use because the paint would go under the stencil and make a complete mess out of it. My mistake was to create it in one single individual piece where all elements are connected with one another. The solution was to disconnect the different elements by creating a bridge that you can see here in blue. I then made sure that the bridges were, would remain uncut so that I would have a series of disconnected elements. This new piece was absolutely stable on the face and could be used without any problems. The lesson I learned is to make sure in the future that my stencils are made of smaller individual pieces that are disconnected from one another. As far as face paints are concerned, I personally prefer to use the face paints that don't have any wax in them and that are more creamy in consistency, such as Paradise or Cryolan. I know, however, that a lot of people prefer the more waxy consistency of, for example, Diamond FX or Tag. But to be honest with you, I think that most brands work as long as they are not applied too wet. If you've watched one of my previous videos where I talk about face painting supplies, you know that I mostly use two types of sponges when I face paint. For stencils, I actually prefer to use the high density sponge. I tend to get better results with it. I cut it in four pieces because I like to squeeze the small piece between my fingers. This gives me better control and enables me to go in between the small areas of the stencils, which are sometimes hard to reach with a bigger sponge. If you have some daubers like these, you could use them to tap your color onto your stencil. They are nice to have, but in my opinion, not absolutely necessary. Here is now how to make sure that your sponge is not too wet when you apply your stencil. I first spritz my sponge a couple of times and I rub it on the cake until the sponge has absorbed all the humidity from the surface of the cake and is no longer shiny. If necessary, repeat this one more time until you have enough paint on your sponge. Take your time to work on the right paint consistency. It takes a little bit of getting used to at the beginning. Do several tests on your hand to get a feel for it. 
pounds quite hard several times because the paint should be opaque but as you can see here the edges look quite powdery almost like a cloud and this is good if however the paint feels very wet when you apply it if it looks shiny very thick and if the edges are quite well defined around it this means that it would not work well with stencils before you start with the application the bare skin or the base color that you apply it on should be completely dry then if you're right-handed hold your stencil firmly with your left hand and tap on the stencil until all the details have been transferred making sure that you don't go over the stencil's edges if your paint is too wet it will run and spread under the stencil and not look very good at all if you get this don't worry it actually happens to me quite often it's trial and errors i will now use my brand new stencil to show you how to apply more than one color i either load a half sponge uh, with both colors, one on each side, so that I can flip it really quickly. Or I load my colors on separate sponges, so that I can grab them really quickly when the stencil is in place, just like here, for example, to make two-toned leopard markings. It's also possible to use split cakes in combination with uh, stencils and create stunning effects very quickly. The next video of this series is about how to practice face painting when there are no kids around. I'm showing you the different methods as well as the pros and cons of each one and my tips and tricks of course so that you can improve your skills in the comfort of your own home. Thank you very much for watching my videos. I hope that I'm able to provide you with useful information. See you next time. Bye!